Hello, Zane. What up? How is it going? Good, man. It's good to see you. It's a pleasure to see you as well. Yeah, thanks, dude. You're looking thanks for good. having me. Thank, yeah, thank, I know. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, I I, uh, I shaved yesterday, which is fantastic. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Looking good. Got a little haircut. It. Got an illegal haircut uh, oh. a week ago at a, a barber shop, a secret barber shop in Los Angeles. So I'm ready to rock and roll. Oh, that's pretty cool. Is it like prohibition times? Do you have to have a password to be able to <laughs> get the cut, get the snip? Yeah, basically. You can't do shit around here right now, dude. We, uh, uh, COVID is the number one cause of death in the state right now. It is crazy over here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It probably is here too in Arizona. I just don't think we're doing anything about it or at least much less than California. No, well, I think that you guys are a little more spread out than we are, you know, here in Los Angeles, we're all on top of each other. So it's really nothing we can do. That's very true. Yes, that is true. We are a little bit more spread out, but, uh, well, I'm, I'm rooting for you guys. I hope that you guys are able to stay sane. I mean, I, I I'm rooting for all of us. That's a better way to. You're so diplomatic. I love this. Uh, you just uh, including We're all in everybody this together. You know, it's <laughs> this. This shit is crazy. You know, my got my parents are in Tucson, and uh, I mean they can't. They're not going anywhere. We're not. I'm not seeing them for Christmas just in case something happens. You know, my dad's 76. Damn. You know, so you know, God forbid yeah. something happen. You know, damn dude, damn. Yeah, same with my parents. My dad had heart surgery, like eight months ago so i uh, and he's also 66 so mm-hmm. i'm trying to stay away we might ah! oh my god i wasn't ready bless for that you. one thank you thank you i need all the blessings i can get that was a man sneeze right there <laughs> thank you i appreciate usually you know it's the cough with me that's quite feminine with my coughs i don't know why oh, yeah? i try to get it more manly but i go <laughs> Almost like Derek Zoolander in the <laughs> in the Iron Lung scene. That's fantastic. But, oh gosh, but anyway, and um, it's been it's been a wild ride though. My wife and I we've been quarantining. We have each other, which is good, and we have our two little kitties, which is great. But I am running on fumes here because one of our cats escaped yesterday, and we lost her, and we were looking all over for her, and I've never. Oh had my a- god, that's. Dude. Yeah. And I, you can't, I guess you can't just be like kitty. Cause they don't respond to that. You have to talk normally and it's, I don't know, have them come to you, but we ended up good news. Spoiler alert. She's back at like one forty-five in the morning. She ended up coming back. We read and researched and they said, put the litter box out by the front door and put some of her favorite toys out there. So we got the, the switch and all that stuff. And, and she came back and she's here so wow it's a christmas miracle i'm so happy for you i appreciate that thank you zade but yeah, Zane, no problem. you're not here to hear about me you're we're here to talk about you Zane oh Holmes. yeah nice <laughs> i love Which, that i've just been i've been uh at home alone not uh not able to uh, get out to work and my my girlfriend works uh every day so i've just been really I've had very minimal human contact. It's just been me, my little dog. I've been doing a lot of talking to him. So the fact mm. that you want to hear me speak about myself, that's fantastic. I'm really oh, my God. I am super excited to hear you speak about yourself. And, I, and first off, amazing comedian. I've been watching a lot. I also just brushed up on the album Live from Rehab, which... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> been out a couple of years now. That was a, that was a fun one. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. And I thought, oh my God, the between the material and speaking to the audience, I thought the audience was really well mic'd because I could hear them very clearly. Dude, uh, I'll straight up, this was recorded on my iPhone. Really? The whole thing was recorded on my iPhone. I didn't even know that I was going to make an album. I, I, I mean, obviously before the pandemic, uh, once a month I would go do this show at uh, this treatment center 
and I, I won't say where it is because they'll kill me if, if uh, they know that I recorded there. But for a year, you know, I'm, I'm just showing up every, every month and just recording my set. And my buddy Sam was like, dude, you need an album. You need to get an album going. And so I started listening to some recordings and I was like, uh, I have an album. I mean, the, the, for whatever reason, I just set my phone right on top of the speaker we were using. And it was such a, uh, the acoustics in that room, it was kind of like a little cafeteria. And as you could hear, the crowd was fucking insane. So like it just, <laughs> it just, it just worked out, you know, I had enough recordings to piece together an album and then, you know, put it out. That is beautiful. And I was going to ask where you recorded it too, because when I Googled um, live at, re at rehab, I saw that you had some shows, one in Tucson and I think stir crazy here in Phoenix. And I, yeah. and then as I heard the album, you were talking to, to people with very few teeth. And I was like, I know Tucson's bad, but I don't think it's that bad. So I wonder what kind of crowd is, uh, is there. Yes. But. So I guess, gosh, now it's 2020. So almost four years ago, I started going into hospitals and drug rehabs and performing stand up for people there. And, uh, along the way I, you know, I ended up going to so many different places and there was a couple that were just really great. And so this one was in, it's in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, I won't say where, because if I say where, then it's like, uh, the, you'll, uh, anyone who's listening will know the place that it was recorded at. Actually, anyone who knows me and, and would care about this probably knows exactly where it was recorded at. It was like the, the greatest show ever once a month. These people right. it was like a state run facility they don't get a lot of extracurricular activities at all. And so you get, uh, you know, 200 people in a room and they're getting, you know, some real serious, you know, raunchy blue comedy. And it's the pretty much the greatest thing that they get all month. They're rowdy, dude. I've seen in that room, I've seen uh, people, I mean, it, people do better. I did well in that room, but people do much better than I did. Like if you heard oh. my album, you're like you're like wow, that's that's a pretty good response. Well, in nights on nights like that, I have friends of mine who are were killing so hard that that the audience, a couple of them, were picking up their chairs and slamming them on the ground, like pushing oh, each other, what? screaming, just like yes, like it oh. was, like it was the greatest place, man. Honestly, honestly, it was the greatest place ever. Yeah. Oh my God. I was going to ask about that too. Cause I know you briefly mentioned laugh to live, which, um, you, I think pre pandem, I know that pandem, I don't know why I'm abbreviating the word makes you sound like a douche, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know that before you were actually going into the clinics or hospitals or treatment centers and you were providing, or you were going and doing comedy shows, I guess comedy clubs weren't, weren't challenging enough. The atmosphere of going into a clinic or a, a treatment center with yeah. people oh go ahead sorry no i was just gonna respond to you i mean yeah here's the thing like i i'm not a famous comedian you know but and i wasn't getting a ton of work you know and a lot of not a lot of clubs were were gate like really gave a shit about what i was doing so i was like you know what i need more stage time i just got to figure out how to do this and so I just started calling up rehabs and uh, I mean, I'm, I used to be a drug addict. I'm sober. I've been sober for eight years. So I, I am uniquely qualified to talk to people who are in rehab, you know? So I call, call them up. I'm like, yeah, I'm a sober guy. Can I come in there and, and tell my jokes? And I would bring my friends and we would uh -huh. do it. And it was a great way to, to build my act, you know? And then about a couple of years later, I started touring and selling tickets and I was able mm -hmm. to do that because of going into these, um, these rehab facilities, you know, on a Friday night, I'd be at a, a detox in, um, in where was it? Encino, this place called Serenity Detox. It was the first place I ever did it. Uh, every, we, I was there every Friday night and we were with people that were, you know, detoxing like one day off heroin, five days off Xanax, like, like Jesus. hardcore you know Jesus, and i yeah. that's where i built my hour 
that's how I went from being able to, to like I had like 20 a 20 minute like opener set and at these little places like that I just forced myself to to work out an hour and then all of a sudden you know I was a couple years later I was um I was able to start selling tickets yeah. That's really, that's really cool. And, and I, I also have to say, I listened to an interview where you were talking about your first time doing it and how rewarding it was just because of one person, which I thought was really cool. Oh yeah. If you could tell the story, that would be better than me botching it, but it was well, it really sure. Cool. I mean, I've, I've heard, I've told the story a number of times, but it's basically like we, I got the phone call. I, I was putting on a benefit show for uh people in recovery it was january of 2017 and i got a phone call from a friend of a friend of a friend and he worked at this hospital in encino and he called me and was like look man i can't bring my people to your show but i'd love them to get a comedy show why don't you come to our detox facility and tell some jokes and i was like that's a terrible idea like what the <laughs> fuck? i was like oh god like like what in the world um that doesn't make any sense you know so mm -hmm. i went and talked to him he showed me the space there's this little rec room and i was like all right man fine i was like i'll, I'll do it no big deal like i can't i remember what it was like uh you know when i was trying to kick drugs and alcohol and it was like anything to take my mind off it, i would have welcomed so mm -hmm. i brought a group of friends over to this uh spot on a friday night there was uh one guy like sleeping on a couch uh another old lady like with her hood up in the back like me mugging us the whole time but listening and then there was this young guy in his early 20s big fat guy uh just sitting there having the time of his life you know they had a a, a freezer of ice creams like free ice creams you know to eat in the rec room and he was just munching them dude just like woofing these ice creams down and <laughs> and, and and really enjoying the show like really really enjoying the show we we there was like, i think there was four or five of us and we did like an hour and a half you know just for basically this kid and the, the couple stragglers in the back and the, and the the security guard who was like watching everybody and you know it was pretty rewarding he really enjoyed it and afterward he was like yo man i'm from montana i haven't I fucking I'm off heroin four days. I've been on heroin for years. I never thought in a, uh, you know a million years I'd be able to laugh without putting heroin in my body. And it was just that was a big wake up call because it was like like whoa like th this was um, I don't know it was just something that was really awesome for this guy, mm -hmm. you know. So I was mm -hmm. like fuck it I'll come back, you know. And I didn't That's think that it was like going to be something that became like my like full time gig and then like led to me being able to, you know, be a, you know, full time working comedian, but it was, you know, and it, and it was so I just, you know, now I've carved out a little fan base in like the rehab community, you know, so uh -huh. it's, uh, it's just pretty funny how it works out that way. That's, that's super cool. And I mean, how many people get that rewarding experience of that? Sometimes all it takes is just one person. Well, dude, I'll tell you what, it, it's pretty, it can be pretty bad sometimes. Really? Like, yes. I'm th I mean, I'm thinking yeah, that, yes, one, but... that show was great. Sure. That show was great, but the novelty wore off very quickly. And there was <laughs> there, there was a lot of times where the, they were really appreciative, but they're also, you're dealing with fucking drug addicts. They're pissed off. They do, a lot of times they don't want you to be there. You know, you show, I yeah. show up to a rehab facility. They'd rather be on their phones or dicking around or whatever. And some idiot comedians coming in to tell them jokes in the middle of their rehab. It's like, oh. you know, you're going in as a comedian, you're going into hostile territory. A lot of times they're like sitting there with their arms crossed. Like, all right, man, fine. Let's just do this and get it over with. So that was not the ideal scenario to do stand up, but, that uh dude i mean i did so many of these it's and and the like the counselors and the owners of the, the rehabs were like counting on me to do a good job you know and, and i wanted to i wanted to be able to come back so i was just i just figured out a way to to be funny in front of all these people but it was a fucking nightmare man oh 
God, See, that's is, a lot of times it's not fun at all. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's it's bad. That's what I was imagining because when I thought, okay, people that are like four days off of heroin, I bet their body is like, I need drugs. I do not need comedy right now. I need yeah. drugs. And so yeah, I, I was wondering. Off. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, and I think, damn, it's hard enough to have the courage to do stand up to a, to a crowd that is not addicted to heroin but then you go in there and what whatever <laughs> drug and then and then yeah. they have that craving and then they're also trying to pay attention to you doing comedy so. yeah it's uh i'm real i don't know what i was thinking doing starting doing this thing <laughs> honestly it was like it i don't know it just was something that like i i was doing it that friday night and then i started reaching out to other places they were like yeah you know come on over and then all of a sudden like i was i had too much work that i had to quit my job and i was like all right i guess i'm doing this now you know and i quit a a, a pretty pretty well-paying corporate restaurant job to to yeah, you were like director of operations at a restaurant yeah yeah i was the director of operations for a, a, a growing uh, company and they were paying me really well like I just, Damn. the owner's a friend of mine and he was like, <laughs> I'm like, he's like, how's comedy going? I'm like, well, the pandemic's happening. He's like, hey man, anytime you want to come back, you'll start six figures. And I'm like, get away from me. <laughs> oh shit, Stop the it. devil, You're... the devil. <laughs> yeah, cause that's, I mean, money's tempting like that, but you know, I, my income dropped uh, significantly, I guess probably, I don't know, 70% my income dropped initially i was Damn. i was right in the fucking line um but that was the that was what i needed to get to the point where i was like like i could do this for a living you know and now i have a, a, a some some fans and stuff you know and i've got like seven or seven or ten cities that i've played at multiple times that i can come back to you know, and that that took a lot of work too, like grinding I it thought out. You, I fun. thought you were going to be like seven to ten fans, so I'm getting <laughs> no, out there. No, I got. How about like, this? I got like a handful. I, I have a handful of people who are who pay real close attention to what I do. It is by no means a large amount, but it's enough that it keeps me going. You know, like I have this uh, this group of people in Denver that will just literally uh, uh, buy my tickets anytime I show up. And like, well, it was, what's us say Monday. So two nights ago we did, uh, uh, it was a Saturday night, Saturday night before Christmas. I zoomed in and did a comedy show for them and all of their people. And, you know, they then me a bunch of money, you know, and the ah. last time I was there, I was, I was there March 1st. And it's so crazy what you can do when you've got like a couple people who really like you. Cause I called this woman, Aaron and I'm like, Aaron, she's like, Zane, are you coming back? I was like, yes, I am. And she's like, okay, I'll, I'll call you back. Dude, she sold 100 tickets for me in two weeks. <laughs> wow. You know, that and that's sad. like, that's huge. I can't do that everywhere. You know, I go to Oakland, I sell like 15 tickets and then no, <laughs> and, and San Francisco, and it's like nothing. Tucson's where I'm from, I, I can sell a couple tickets. Austin, Texas, I can sell a couple tickets, but uh yeah, there's some places that are that are rough, but you know, you find a couple people who can really get behind you and and they'll give you a career for real. You know, I because I, I've got no following on Instagram. You know, I've I've got I'm not like no one has any idea who I am, but I'm able to do what I love uh as my career, you know, and I, and I don't need uh an an agent or a manager or a um I don't know, a club to vouch for me or a TV credit. You know, I called when I, well, the first time I did the show in Denver, the same thing I did at the at Stir Crazy Comedy Club. I just started calling people, you know, and uh, people who owned rehabs, uh, people who uh, were connected to uh, the recovery community. And because I, I, you know, I had found my little niche and I was like, I'm coming, I'm doing a show, buy my tickets. And I would sell them tickets over the phone. I'd get them to buy, to give me money, their credit card number, and I'd email them tickets from Eventbrite right over the phone. And that's how I started, um, you know, touring. Damn. And the first time I went to a place, it took probably, it takes hundreds of, 
like when I go to a new city, it takes hundreds of phone calls. You know, I just call mm-hmm. literally everyone that I could possibly think of and uh, search for groups on Facebook and connect with those people. And, um, but yeah, once that initial work's done, I, if I do a good job when I go out there and I'm funny, when I go back a second time, it's, it's, it's really easy. Yeah. That's amazing. And I, re- I do remember hearing you on an interview saying you did like 300 calls a week. Uh, something. Oh, like I do that, much which... more than that. Oh. Yeah, I make, oh, I, I, I do. No, no, it's like, it's an intense thing. I make, I, yeah, I make, I'm making hundreds and hundreds of calls, dude. It's really like my job really is like I'm a, I'm a cold call salesman selling my own tickets. But, you know, I want to have a comedy career and I, and no one's going to give it to me. So I don't I mean, I don't know any other way to I don't know any other way to sell tickets besides like reaching out to people, and knocking on doors and like, you know, that's you know, basically convincing them that I'm I'm worthwhile. You know what I mean? That's really cool. And, I, and I, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, there's other guys that do this type of thing and like they find a niche. Like there's a, a couple lawyers who are comedians who do like a, a law tour and they'll call law offices and sell tickets. There's some mm-hmm. other guys who do these like uh, frat tours or um, or like, uh, you know, these blue comedy tours or whatever. And they figure out their their market and then they just they just sell them and they just sell and sell and sell. And then, you know, after years you get this, uh, this circuit going, you know what I mean? If you could be any other niche, nit, nit, why did I say niche, 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 then which one would you choose? If I could be any other niche. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. The, the Uber famous mainstream niche oh (laughs) that's a that is a good selection yes you know i would love i really you know coming up man there was a lot of guys that were just so unbelievably talented right off the bat they got picked up by headliners or just immediately like had the chops to be headliners got to all the festivals you know got um specials right away or shows or got acting gigs and uh you know i always just wished that i was one of those like chosen ones you know that i was that funny right off the bat or like that special right off the bat um but i wasn't so you know i was able to carve out my little place in the comedy community through just like sheer force really and also like a little bit of luck and opportunity you know so uh i mean i'm really grateful for what i have and the little niche that i've that i've been able to carve out like you know if i i, I honestly um I'll, I'll be happy if i can continue to grow my following little by little every year and if i never get a chance to have my name on the wall of the comedy store or if i'm never passed at the comedy cellar in New York, well, that just is what it is, you know. There's a lot of guys who who have their names on the wall of the comedy store and who play at the comedy cellar on a regular basis, who also have to have other jobs, you know. So I've got to yeah. I've got to consider myself very lucky. Yeah, and I think just going back to I was going to say this before the you say that there are some people that are just like hardcore fans follow everything you do. I, I mean, I really think that you have to have genuine quality talent for that to happen because yeah and i i believe it too from from the album and the stand-up that i've seen online i i think that you have it and i and i've interviewed like a hundred other comedians here in in quarantine some of them very good (laughs) some of them also very good because i love all my guests but i was gonna say i mean you really i I don't know what I think I was going to see Craig Conan. I had him on and. Uh, oh yeah. I, I love him. him. He's, he's one of my best friends. We, yeah. yeah, we're, we're like, we're neighbors almost. I spent a lot of time with him. That's awesome. And I saw that you opened for him in the house of comedy in Minnesota. 
and yeah. then I was I was thinking you were gonna open for him in uh, Arizona as well, but I think it was Michael Linochi instead. Yeah, but yeah, uh, which was very disappointing. No, I'm kidding. Michael's awesome. <laughs> uh, but but no, I, I I think that I'd I'd love to see you next time, and I think that your talent is is really up there. So I feel like Thank whatever you. level you get, I feel like you are able to package that up with integrity, with grit, and with hard-earned talent so I, I think that that's much better than just being a nationally touring headliner and i don't know not having those things thanks dude i really appreciate i really appreciate the compliment yeah absolutely that got way too serious so i'll have to edit that part out but you know, that's just for us no. um, <laughs> I, I was gonna ask i mean i know you mentioned a little bit but before we get into the advice portion of the podcast where we answer some questions oh answer. advice yeah right i'm supposed to be giving advice <laughs> yes wait, how, are you a are wait, you, how often ahead. i'm sure that you you probably get this answer a lot but when people ask you know what sort of advice would you give a new comedian how often do you get the answer quit oh mm. You know, Don't that do question it. doesn't really arise because these this advice is like the silliest shit on the world. And you'll see this uh, isn't okay. like comedy specific in terms of like comedian specific uh, okay, advice. Cool. Advice. But is that the advice you would give to a, an aspiring comedian? Yeah, dude. It, it's I mean, yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. Find something else. Ah, oh, beautiful. Well, good. Glad we're inspiring here. Uh, but I was going <laughs> to, before we get into the advice board, I was going to ask pandemic. I know you said you were an addict before. I'm, these are trying times. And I was going to ask with work kind of going downhill, what have you been doing in terms of taking it one day at a time? Or have you been able to find Zoom oh, shows well, and make things I'll tell work? You what. I'll tell you a number of things. Uh, well, recently, and I'll tell you, this is probably the greatest thing I've done in a long time. About a month and a half ago, almost two months, I started taking antidepressants. It's fantastic. Honestly, one of the greatest decisions I've ever made in my entire life. It's helping immensely. Uh, you know, I always was, I always thought that like thinking about dying was like fun and funny. And I'd bring oh. it up and other people were like, hey, yeah, we don't think like that. <laughs> oh, shit. You know, but like, I, I'm just one of those people that I thought it was hilarious that if I woke up and I couldn't find my wallet, I'd be like, yep, today's the day. I'm doing it. You know? Fuck. It's like oh. a joke. But like, kind of, you know, yeah, like iffy, you know, like, always, is keep, he... always keep on the edge. Right. Like, is he serious or isn't he? Because like, I don't know. And I, again, like, I didn't realize people didn't think like this. I do generally, you know, I'm, I, I, I love life. I think there's a lot to, um, to get out of it, but I've always looked at it like a bit of a, like working at a restaurant, you know, I worked at a restaurant for a very long time and it's like, mm -hmm. sure. I know I need the hours, but if you guys want to cut me, like I'm good. Fuck. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like I'm good because these all these people need things from me that I don't want to give, and you know, so that's that's obviously a joke, but like that's a good that's a good funny and poignant analogy. It's I'm, like I mean I don't here's the, it's like come on what are we doing here. You know, it's none of this really matters. Everyone around me is eating way too much and drinking way too much, and they're fat and they're annoying and they smell. And, <laughs> and like, yeah. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> you know, so I started taking antidepressants, and I'm I'm in a much more chill mood, which is pretty fantastic. So that's number one. Nice. Uh, number two is that lucky for me, uh. I guess the silver lining to this pandemic is like, I can't tour obviously. So I went back to the roots and the, all the rehab facilities, they need entertainment, but they can't take their people anywhere. And now I can do uh, comedy right here from my couch over zoom, just like the way I'm doing it right now. 
to any rehab facility in the country or the world, really. So I started calling, uh, this is actually my girlfriend's idea. She was like, why don't you just do your rehab shit over Zoom? I was like, you are a genius. And so I started <laughs> calling places. I started calling places. They were like, yes, absolutely do this. And now I've done, I guess since April, probably, oh God, maybe 200. Damn. Yeah, Ooh. like for real. So I, uh, yeah, it, I zoom in and I do, uh, I do my little fucking shtick and and i have friends of mine craig is one of my one of the guys like i call all the time and you know we'll just zoom in from our living rooms to a rehab and so that's been given me and some other friends of mine a real opportunity to i don't know work on my act you know damn like if i did if i wasn't doing this i wouldn't be getting up at all you know this is in new york there's not like a bunch of rooftop shows going on and the outdoor shows that are that are actually going on, you know, they're all of the the people who were playing in the clubs are now playing the parking lots. So no one was calling me for for very many gigs. You know, I got a couple uh, during the pandemic, uh, but not a lot. And luckily, I got to travel to uh, Minneapolis with Craig, and I went to uh, where did I go? I was in San Diego, and then uh, Appleton, Wisconsin, with another guy. So that was some good work that I got over the summer, but yeah, it's been tough, you know? So I've just been doing a lot of, uh, I've been telling jokes over zoom, you know, that's pretty incredible. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I just saw that on your website too, where, um, you got the packages there. I saw Craig, I saw Ali Makovsky as well. Yeah. Yeah. They're that's both cool. of those are, them are good friends of mine. And like, really, when it comes down to it, like if I can, if they can work with me, I call them first. You know, they're just solid friends and, you know, the doing it over Zoom is like a bit of a different animal, you know, it's yeah. like a bit the different, different timing, different things. So uh, we've all gotten, we, there was a bit of a learning curve to like how to, to do it over Zoom successfully, but we've all gotten pretty good at it. Nice. Well, props yeah. to you, man. And the crew. Thanks, dude. That's, uh, that's really cool. Bef- all right. Before we get into the advice, just one, maybe two questions. The hair, as I've seen interviews of you, uh, the hair, I love how it is now. It's so freaking cool and I'm very jealous of it. The curls, when you get it in its optimal curl state, it almost looks like a Lego hair piece that you just take off and on again. (laughs) So that's a fantastic description of my my (laughs) mop. Yeah, dude, it's wild. It gets wild sometimes. It's wonderful. I wish mine could get as curly as that. It gets this annoying little wave and not a, it's not even a cool wave where it's like killer. What is, I almost called it a swirl killer swell, bro. But it's like this annoying little gangly wave. So props to respect to the curl. And then also the mustache, how long has that been there? And it's been as long as I've seen you. And the videos. mustache has been since 2000 summer of 2018. So yeah, over two years. Yeah, I was, uh, uh, I was dating some girl. I got divorced uh, in 2000, at the end of 2017. And, uh, you know, so I was all over the place um, mm-hmm. looking to change my vibe. And I was dating this girl. I was in this like ran- random long distance thing in Sa- uh, this girl in San Francisco. And she was like, I hadn't shaved in a couple days. She's like, you look good with a mustache. I was like, you know what? Now or never, baby. Let's do it. So I started growing a mustache and I I kept (laughs) saying, you know what? I'm going to shave it off as soon as I break up with this current girlfriend who loves this mustache. You know, I just kept running into girls who kept being like, oh, hey, man, I I hit you up because I like your mustache. And I'm like, (laughs) now I'm this guy. Now I'm now I'm supposed to be u- uber sexual mustache guy. It's a lot of to live up to, to be honest. Like, like it's 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 something else. And I got to stay thin because you if you become fat guy with a mustache, it starts to look real creepy. You know? Yeah. So I gotta or you just look like Mario. Way. Yeah. Or exactly. And then sometimes, like I got the big curly hair and the mustache, and I I, I really look fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Well, you know, I think so I'm waiting. 
spectacular. Wait, thank you very much. I'm I'm waiting to I'm I'm waiting to shave it off. My current girlfriend, she hasn't seen me. Uh, I've been with my current girlfriend for, I guess we started seeing each other a little over a year ago. We live together now, but she's yeah, she's never seen me without a mustache, you know, and I don't know if she ever will. Oh my God, maybe you'll die. You know, my my wife's grandpa, he had the mustache on as long as long as he could grow it. And then they did shave it one time and his skin was 76 year old skin, except for the mustache part. It was like 12 years old, beautiful, pristine, <laughs> not a wrinkle, just beautiful skin. So that's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe uh, I should shave it every now and again just to let my let my the, my lips catch up with the rest of my face. <laughs> yeah, so when you finally shave it, if you're like 40, it doesn't look like you're 12 right on the upper yeah, lip. Yeah, exactly. That's true. God, yeah, age it out equally. Well, uh -huh. well, good, Zane. This has been a pleasure so far. We're about to get into the advice. Before we it. get into some questions, though, I was going to say we have, uh, I like to center myself with an inspirational quote so that we can get jazzed and ready to just answer these questions. All right, let's get Here's jazzed. Here. Let's get jazzed. Yes, you're the first one that's agreed to get jazzed with me. Thank you. Yeah, let's get jazzed on some inspiration. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to ask before I jazz us up, I usually like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that get them jazzed when they are feeling unjazzed. Inspire no, I don't. Not off the top of my head. No, not any inspirational quotes. No. Uh, are you yeah, not? No, a, are quote. you a quote guy or are you not a quote Dude, guy? You just like. Here's the no. thing. I, I don't. I guess I, I'm really not a quote guy. I really have a terrible memory when it comes to like movie lines, quotes, details of things. Yeah, my my girlfriend really. I, I drive her up the wall. I can't remember anything she's ever said ever, and I just am like, I got a bad memory. I don't know. <laughs> But I, I do love inspiration. You know, I, uh, I work really hard. I even, uh, a good friend of mine who's a, uh, who's a filmmaker and a director and a, a writer started a, an online uh, writer's course. And three weeks ago, I'm on the phone with him. He's like, I got to hire you from, as my business coach. I'm like, are you, what? What are you fucking talking about? It's like, I'll just help you. Like, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll help you. He's like, no. He's like, I need you to be on the phone with me one hour a week. I'm going to pay you to be my business coach. So we did our second call today. And I'm like, I'm pulling out all the stops with, with like i don't know what i'm just making people signed up in this class i mean you know I, I got him pretty inspired but oh i have God. no idea how i did it i have no idea that's, how I did it. that's incredible i feel like i feel like i'm talking with the next tony robbins here because you know i feel like <laughs> tony robbins he doesn't even he doesn't like quotes he just makes them he's like i don't like other people's quotes i don't even know if oh. that's true but it's, uh, you know, it's, it sounds like right. the things that he says, they turn into quotes. And those are the things that end up on corporate buildings and walls. So interesting. So advice like general, a general, all right. So a general quote to get inspired, like, dude, how about this? You don't know if the whole world's going to burn down tomorrow. We have no idea. Tomorrow, the stock market could crash. We could all get COVID. There could be an earthquake. We might not make it. All we got is today, baby. So what are you going to do? You better make the best of it. Yes. Oh, I love that. That's like the Helberg YOLO. That's beautiful. That's right. That's you don't know what's coming tomorrow. So you better eat everything in your refrigerator immediately. <laughs> and then it took a dive. But you know what? It was great. I think Christmas may not come on Friday. Open the presents now eat all the candy, get a stomach ache. You're not going to feel it tomorrow. You'll be dead. <laughs> is that inspiring? That is beautiful. You only live today. Tomorrow is out. Tomorrow is like an tomorrow. X that never arrived. Well, you never know. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't. So you got to do the best you possibly can today. You really do. All right. That was a really good primer. I love that inspirational quote. I think it's setting us up for this next one that I have. This quote, it's actually not by any person at all. 
It's by a robot. Okay. And its name is Inspirobot. So what it does, this is a real thing. I'm not making this up. It's a robot that uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woo man and just mash them together for a AI generated inspirational quote. I love that. I thought you would say. So we're going to try and decipher this one. This one, this week, it says, <clears throat> X's can change our perception on money. Hmm. X's can change our perception on money. Does that, I think that kind of actually makes sense. Well, every human being has a different relationship with money, earning, what they want in their life, their goals for the future, whether or not they, uh, they are seeking financial security or they're seeking a, you know, a creative artistic lifestyle. And so every, every woman that I've been with has had uh, a different relationship to money and uh, to varying degrees, you know, right. my current girlfriend now, she, she really wants to have a, uh, financially free life and she wants security she wants to have a family in, a, in the future and so uh you know money is an issue you got to have money to have any of those things you know they've been with a couple girl i've been with uh, i've i dated a really rich girl whose dad was was like a hundred millionaire she didn't give a shit about money at all she got an allowance and uh and was she the one that wanted I you to have the mustache like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, you know, she didn't care. She didn't give a shit about money at all. Dang. She didn't care that I that I wasn't making any much money at all. She was like, whatever, I don't care. I, mean, I was like, I'm buying dinner. She took me to Michelin star restaurants and just like and refused refused my money. You know, bought me. Wow. She, we were together on my birthday. She bought me a a, a, a wagyu steak, ninety dollar an ounce wagyu steak, and I was like, yeah, it's no big deal. Yes, you know. Fuck. And then, but. You know, before, after her, I dated uh, uh, some, you know, a girl who just was had a random job, didn't give a shit about money at all, really, really never talked about it. My ex-wife uh, was claimed that she didn't uh, want, that she didn't care about money. But in the end, the fact that I wasn't making as much as I was at the restaurant became an issue. And it was part of the reason why she kicked, she, she, she left you know so uh yes your that your exes can change your perception on money if you allow them to you know what i've what's happened to me over the course of my lifetime in and out of relationships is i've really gotten to understand what my values are with when it comes to money and what i value out of life and you know it took it, it's actually in the past like four or five years, maybe even eight years, you know, I started um, making more and more money and I got to the, a place where I was making more money than I ever was. And I or any more money than I ever had in my life. And I was miserable, mm. you know, and it wasn't because the money made me miserable. I was just wasn't doing the, the job that I wanted. You know, I was just, I was just in a miserable job. Uh, and I guess the, the money really ha like, you know, making 90 grand a year is not enough to fix what's going on. You know what I mean? Maybe more is, I don't know, maybe, maybe a million dollars. Like, cause I can imagine if, if uh, my old boss was like, Hey man, I'll give you $300,000 cash in a duffel bag. If you work for me for one year, I'd be like, okay, I'll do that. Yeah, Ooh. sure. Yeah. That's tax free. But, like, that's, that's a fantasy. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's like a fantasy, you know, you never but, know if you don't ask. I mean, right. That's true. I have mentioned it before. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Just slyly, slyly slide it in there. Great. Yeah. Like my quote, my, my new quote is 300 grand in a cash in a duffel bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inspired. I, yeah. I'm all ears now. That's great. Well, but yeah, know, man, say. when it comes to money, it's like, you know, you really, if you let your exes, uh, if you let your exes, determine how you feel about yourself i don't know if that's uh, such a good thing that's true it's by robot i was thinking of it 
as I loved your observation. My observation was coming from the perspective of someone that wasn't that good with money when I started. When I was a young Stefan, when I had the, you know, the the 12 year old upper lip skin, I -hmm. was not so good with money, wet behind the ears and wet under the fingers because the money would just slip away. So Mm -hmm. then I had some exes. One of my exes, she was, uh, she loved money, loved money, my money. So we would go and I would spend it. And then I realized, wow, this is almost like a little partnership we've got here, a little LLC. And we have to have some cash flow. I have to be making enough money to be able to um, buy the Wagyu steak for my ex. Well, present at the time. And then I got better at it. And then my current wife, jackpot. She is so good with money. She's just as frugal as I have become. And our perspectives on cash is just the same. And so we're building a, a little empire together. And uh, that's fantastic. That's a- huge exaggeration for me but i mean i started off i started from the bottom now i'm here as drake would have said and i just feel like the x's i stepped on my x's to get that better perspective not literally for the fcc or whoever is you use them as stepping stones correct yes stepped metaphorically all over them so it was beautiful great so good all right well i'm glad where i feel jazzed i'm ready to move on to the questions we're vibing. Vibe check, positive. Okay. This first question, this is found by our fan, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. It's found from Reddit. It says, weird situation, please help. <clears throat> Why am I hearing the same answer from the person I am talking to on the phone like it's a recording? After three minutes of conversation with my grandma, I can hear a sound like a click. And after that, she starts answering the same questions again like a robot. It's very strange. And it only happens with her. Like, is there any possibility that her having an old phone to cause it? Or what can it be? Yo, she's got Alzheimer's, dude. (laughs) Your grandmother has Alzheimer's. What? How do you not know that? How does this idiot not know that? Come on. Your grandmother's answering the same question over and over again. There's only one thing that could be. Either she does not listen to things. Either she hates you and isn't listening to you and wants you to get off the phone. So she's annoying (laughs) you or she has Alzheimer's or both. Oh my God. See Zane, this, these conversations, this is how I realized that you're way smarter than I am because you started off fresh, solid perspective on cash. And now you're coming in here. I was, I was thinking, God, maybe grandma was kidnapped and they left a recording so that when the phone gets yeah, answered, yeah, it's that's just, a, you know what, now that you say that, that's probably what it is. <laughs> I loved Alzheimer's though. That might, act, I mean, I don't love Alzheimer's. I hate Alzheimer's. I wish <laughs> that would go away, but I think. Yeah. The yeah. Idea... Fuck Alzheimer's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. F it. But, oh, um, funny. All right. Well, I think we kind of answered that one. Your grandma has Alzheimer's. There's nothing you can do about it. You only live today. Eat all the food in your fridge. Bye. Hey, you know what? Your grandma's only living today. Because <laughs> oh, of the Alzheimer's. Come on. Come on. Your grandma oh, so- <laughs> is only living in the moment, baby. Oh, God. So you might as well take advantage of it and ask her questions that like, you really want to know the answer to because then she'll she'll never remember it grandma where do you she's hide the gonna, stash of cash she's not gonna remember. yeah yeah exactly. yeah that's she's she's probably got a cash in the cookie jar somewhere yeah and then you know you get a fresh perspective on cash from your ex grandma because she's only living today so that got dark sorry grandma i well my grandma's dead so i don't know what i'm saying sorry too I mean, both my grandparents died when I was in, uh, well, all four, all four of my grandparents died, but by the time I was 14, I mean, it's like that grandparents do they're, they're old, you know? Uh, Yes. Circle of life. Exactly. As long as they don't die from fucking grandparents dying, as long as they don't die from COVID, you cure them of COVID, get them on their way to die naturally on their own outside of the fucking nursing home or their or wherever they're living for the love of god if they die of covid instead of heart disease which god intended 
you're done. You're going to go to hell. You're, you're fucked. You're going to be mm-hmm. looked down upon. You're going to have a little scarlet letter on you. That's right. <sighs> Signed by grandparents. Okay. All right. We've got this next question. You ready? You jazzed? Yes, I'm ready. <sighs> All right, this one's still jazz. Okay, good. This one's from Daisy. And she says, Thank you, Daisy. Just bought a stun gun in Africa from a very friendly street vendor. It was only about 12 bucks, but the thing that really coaxed me into buying it was the fact that the box said the gun makes an exquisite gift. Just found out that stun guns are illegal in Canada, my home country. I'll need to be heading home in a few months, so I'll have time to formulate a plan as for what to do. What do I do with the gun? In parentheses, open to all, more parentheses, and I mean all answers, whatever they may be. Uh, wow, stun yourself, baby. That's what's up. Stun- Get yourself, <laughs> stun yourself, dude. Yeah, that's, you want to talk about horny shit right there. No oh. one's talking about this. Stun yourself. Oh, yeah. That's, if she's listening right now, that's what I say. You know, turn the lights down, put, light a couple candles, get your significant other in the room, and just go to town stunning the shit out of each other. Stun oh. his nuts, stun, stun your neck. Oh, yeah, the after effects are great. I don't know. I just love anything that's bought on the street in a foreign country. Yeah, I spent a lot, you know, if being in Arizona, I'm sure you spent a lot of time in Mexico, one of my favorite places in the world. Uh, great to visit. Also, as a teenager would go there a lot to buy illegal well stun guns. there they're illegal drugs stun guns oh no pills dude <laughs> you can get anything in mexico at the at the pharmacia anything that you need a prescription for here you can get you can get valiums you can get viagra you can get birth control you can get you get all ice on the street right there dude love it absolutely love it and then you wow. gotta smuggle it back into in the united states yeah you gotta oh. smuggle that shit. Any tips on smuggling? Yeah, just maybe just not. Don't. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> keep it in your keep that shit in your pockets. You know what I mean? Oh, I like that. I don't know. There's you know, no. There's you... no. There's no was... volume sniffing drug. Dog. Oh, I like that. I was gonna you know? say, and I just got the idea from that gigantic monumental mustache. But I think you could probably stick like one volume in there oh yeah yeah right 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 yeah definitely oh god it would be called a stash that's beautiful fuck well that's a good way yeah all right nailed it you fucking nailed it seven (laughs) proud of you i want to hurt myself now that was i'm ashamed of that one but uh no don't be ashamed that's a fantastic one that's a great great little light pun mustache pill stash so I, I love. Explaining oh it my too. gosh! It just reminds me, like stashing things, dude. I used to, I used to date uh, this uh, girl with like the biggest boobs ever, and she would just, we'd go to like concerts or whatever, and she would, she would stash uh, liquor bottles in her cleavage. It's fantastic. Wow. That's what I'm thinking. This girl needs to do. She needs to do some version of that. She needs to like, de- like take the take the stun gun apart, stash the bits, you know do some sort of stashing within your body parts claim you have some sort of like i don't know metal plate in your head or some shit you know you know how it goes (laughs) i i love that i was i thought you were gonna say that she needs to find a local street vendor that'll give her a boob job and that way she can get boobs big enough to just stash the entire stun gun but i don't know the size of stun guns is it like a pistol is it like a rifle because that way yeah. yeah i mean I haven't been to visit the friendly friendly street vendors of South Africa, so I'm not sure what it would look like. But I like the I stash. Why the she cleavage. bought that stun gun? I really want to know why she bought that stun gun. And what and of course, of course she knows that she's not gonna be able to bring that back home. I wonder if she's just got that for protection there, or if she's just walking around stunning her friends. She well, like she said drunk th- she's got the stun gun now. <laughs> she's like easy tina i said we're going home so i think yeah. she said she got coaxed into it because it makes an ex- exquisite gift so i don't know who she's even going to gift it to if she's like oh mom would love Dude. this you know what anyone who gets conned into buying a stun gun because it's going to be an exquisite gift deserves to lose the money on the stun gun 
Right. There's nothing and it was exquisite only... about a stun gun. What is it? An ivory stun gun? What is it like? Is this a fucking stun gun made out of blood diamonds? <laughs> it shoots Amarula. That's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's zebra striped, real zebra stripes. Yeah, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. You never know. But I like the I, I like the blood di- the blood diamonds. I feel like would be a little more expensive. Maybe ivory too. But who mm-hmm. knows? She, she said got cooks. friendly, An exquisite gift. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, any other stashing tips before we? Or just life tips in general for this person that bought a stun gun off of a friendly street vendor? Um, stun yourself. That's it. I don't know. No, stun I've yourself. got no advice for this person. I'm annoyed that I'm annoyed that she got conned into buying the stun gun because it was an exquisite gift. <laughs> that is, yes, that is annoying. What? Like, this it'd be the- like, like, not everything. You, not everything is exquisite you know yeah this is the type of person i don't know why her family let her go to africa because this seems like the type of person that just doesn't think things through and then they end up in jail you got to bail them out and they're like well i didn't know that you couldn't go 30 over the speed limit and so right i don't know uh you know i'm sure god i've always wanted to go to africa i'm sure it's a beautiful place but it sounds like this person should not be allowed to travel anywhere alone she she's got seems like she might need a chaperone right. i would get i would get it if she was like the only way i get that she buys a stun gun is if she's drunk and wanted to use it to fuck with her friends that's that's the only acceptable answer for buying the stun gun in on the street from somebody so if you're you're drunk and you're going to use it in a drunk way to stun your friends a hundred percent a hundred. I mean, all I don't know, dude. If it was twelve bucks, and I I would do it sober. If it was twelve bucks, and I I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna bring this to the states. I'm just gonna have it here. I heard Johannesburg is a little dangerous, so just a little security. Oh, and, uh, as oh, okay, as something as protection. Right, right. Okay, and then maybe fuck with my friends. I don't know. Have a little fun in the stun. Who knows. Okay, now that's a good one. <laughs> give you, I'll give you that one. That one, uh, have a little fun in the stun. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Zane. I'm so sorry. You're a professional. That's a good one. <gasps> no, that's, look, a, a, if you ever catch me making a pun like that on stage or in public, please pull my card. I'm no longer allowed to perform. That, for you, though, on and, and, uh, this being your pulpit you know oh killing it i i encourage puns at all times i think it works i think it works for you i think it works for your vibe absolutely and if you did stand up I, I feel like you'd be a heavy pun comic and i think it would work really oh i appreciate that yeah. i think i don't know is a heavy pun comic like looked down upon is it the lowest of the i don't know I don't, I, really, I don't know i don't know I don't know too many heavy pun comics, mm. but the hey, you know there can be only pun. I guess I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'm so ah oh, fuck. I usually am not this heavy on the puns. I'm laying it on very thick. It's just I see these opportunities. I I can't help it, man. It's a sickness. Well, you're very good at it. Thank Play you. to your strengths. <laughs> That's I'll you know that's it. my inspirational quote for the day. Play to your strengths. If if you're good at ridiculous puns, 10x, 10x your pun creations. I, I know honestly, you threw out like four, three or four puns in this podcast. I would have loved 40. Really? <laughs> oh shit. All right. I was if I was say... your business coach. Yeah, if I was your business coach, I would want a pun every 45 seconds to a minute minimum oh my god I, you know when you were giving me the compliment i felt like the compliments you were giving me was like me giving you a shitty drawing and you were like this looks good for your type of person and then you put it on the fridge and then after i leave you tear it off and no then- no I'm, I'm a fan of your puns 
I really want you to do more. I really want you to do, we've got like, I don't know how many minutes we have left, but I want like 10 more puns. Oh crap. We're like 30 seconds away from the end. So it's, uh, all right. Well then one, we need one more pun to end a pun to end them all. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, give me some time to think, but I wanted to say thank you, Zane, for joining the podcast. We've reached the end and I'm still trying to think of a pun here. I'm on pressure. Oh my God. What am I going to do? Maybe I'll just edit something in post. So I'll put a pun in and then take some of your laugh and we'll okay. figure it out. But, uh, <laughs> but Zane wanted to say a huge thank you. And also wanted to ask, what have you got going on? Where can people follow you? And uh, what have you got to plug? Oh yeah. You know, follow me follow me everywhere it's just like instagram i'm on instagram a lot i'm not really i'm not really on twitter or facebook too much so if you want to talk to me i'll i will interact with you on instagram um and if you're funny on tiktok message me and i'll follow you i'm a, I'm a big i like i like watching tiktoks those are pretty cool not really good at making that kind of content but yeah you know you can go to my website you can buy some of my merch oh that's exciting you can buy a t-shirt from me off my website you can listen to my Ooh. album you can listen to other podcasts what is coming up well very exciting the pandemic's gonna end at some point and then i will be back on the road when that's going to be i don't know it's not tomorrow it may not be for a while so until then you're just gonna have to wait, you know? I actually, I have another, uh, I have a Life and Rehab 2 album that I, I've I'm been sorry, thinking about. sorry, time's up for out. the promos. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> it's not out yet. I'm thinking about putting out a Life from Rehab 2. I did, an, I got another like a uh, little EP in the, Ooh. yeah, it's like 35 minutes in the chamber of like oh, one really good set that I did at that rehab place. Um, Is it also I, from yeah. an iPhone? Yeah. Dude, I, you know what? I, I remember when I used to work in Manhattan and I would see those huge billboards. I think they're in LA too, where it's like, this picture was shot from an iPhone. I feel like they need to have you and be like, this album. This was album recorded. was recorded on an iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> the, I'm st yeah, well, good enough. I mean, uh, the, the quality is pretty fantastic. You telling me it was on an iPhone. That's blew me away. Blew me away. Yeah. Oh. That's amazing. And guess what? All of you guys that are listening or watching, if you're like, oh, he's got so many things, it's going to be in the show notes. So you can just click on there and you can follow him. You can talk to Zane. You, <clears throat> you can stay on, the, on the, the lookout for his new album that might be coming out soon. And uh, by the way, one last thing, Zane. Lovely name. When I saw Zane, I usually see it as a surname, but as like the frontal name. I, I haven't seen it. It's not too common. I looked up the meaning of it. it has meanings in a uh, bunch of different languages, which is really cool. Did you do you know all the meanings of your name? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, cool. No, I mean I know it's uh, it it means like beautiful in Arabic. I know that it's like uh, uh, an old English form of John. I know that. Uh, yeah. That, I don't know. It's a family name, so oh, passed down through my mother's side. You sounded very protective when you said that. It's a family name. You can't, no, you can't have it. But yeah, I think it was gift of God in Hebrew as well. So it's. Uh, wow. Wow. That's really good for my ego. I like that. Maybe I'll start looking <laughs> up more of these meanings. <laughs> yeah. Um, I looked up Stefan and it was just like white guy that is trying to make Stephen fancy. So I don't have too many meanings for <laughs> Stefan. But uh, I'm jealous of Zane. The, I'm jealous of you as a person, I guess. You're super funny. You don't have to rely on puns. You've got a cool mustache. Your hair is just uh, super curly and nice. So Cool. I'm, I'm, I, I like that. You've really made me feel good about myself during this podcast. That's, and I've made it. myself feel really bad. So I, I'm glad that we balanced each other out. I gave you made you... yourself feel bad. No, you're the best, dude. No, I'm kidding. You're I'm a really kidding. good interviewer. Your wavy hair is cool. <laughs> it's like very Jonathan Taylor Thomas in the late nineties. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're probably, you're probably 30, but you look 24, you know, you've got like a good youthful vibe going on, man. And you're building your empire. With your wife, you got a wife. Look at you. Thank How long you. Have you and your wife been together? We've been together for eight years. 
Whoa. Yep. Dude, I can't we- I can't keep a wife to save my life. Oh, bro. I felt I my the my heartstrings were pulled when you were talking about the day after Christmas. Although fuck <laughs> that song, dude. On Christmas, I gave you my heart. Very next oh, day. Oh, hilarious. Fuck, dude. I just ah oh, I hate that song and now I, I hate it even more. So uh dude, be sin- honest, my uh, my div- my divorce was the greatest thing dude getting divorced is pretty dope because you're in it's you're in a obviously if you're getting divorced you're in, a, you're in a relationship that isn't working you know that is a good point very good point i like that's another inspirational quote from zane hmm. 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 beautiful it's pretty good all right man well that's the end of the podcast any other words you would like to say before we end no, dude, you're awesome, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And everyone, thank you for listening. Honestly, just the fact if it, if one person is actually listening to this, I really appreciate that you made it all the way through. I seriously, I really like one. If I get one new fan out of this, one person who messages me, we'll be best friends. I'll message you back. We'll ch- We'll chat. You know, it'll be great. Nice. That's awesome. You hear that, mom? New friend. He's cooler than me. Oh, by the you way, moms, be- huge. I'm huge with moms. I've got a lot of I, a lot of my friends' moms listen to all my shit. I don't know what to make of that. But yeah, if your mom's listening, please join the mom crew. We can chat. Nice. Zane's moms. That could be like a podcast or something. You talk with everybody's moms. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, man. Well, thank you so much again, Zane. Real treat to be able to talk with you. Super funny, super smart, super just a good, a good, you're like whole wheat bread. It's just tasty and fucking good for you. That's awesome, man. That was a weird I'm compliment. I'm my, sorry. I'm going to tell that to my girlfriend when she comes home. I'll be like, you know what? You know what? I know. I know I didn't do the dishes, but Stefan says I'm like whole wheat bread. And you're not getting a slice tonight. Oh, fuck. There we yeah. go. Oh, <laughs> there you go, baby. You did it. You're not getting a slice tonight. <laughs> she'll be like, uh, she'll be like uh, okay. You think I'll ever have sex with you ever again? Good luck. <laughs> uh, I, I feel... <laughs>